Well, I, I, okay, just real quick, an anecdote. Um, I was at the New York airport, the JFK airport, standing in line for security. And there was a long security line, and I was near the front, and I heard this lady, this, this wife and her husband, were standing near the front, and the security guard told her to go through the first class lane, because it was empty. And no one was coming through, and no one was coming through for, for you know, <coughs> all the way down the terminal, you could see it was empty. No one was coming through first class, so the security guard told her, go ahead and go through first class. Being a cool guy. Being a cool guy. Right. Because his job, he, he was also breaking the rules, I'm sure, trying to expedi uh, uh, expedite the process. So this lady says, well, uh, it says first class. And he says, I know, ma'am, it's okay, go ahead and go through first, sa first class. And she goes, but my ticket is, is not first class, it's coach. All right, that's it, lady. Go to the back of the line. <laughs> you know, right? That's it. No, but then it, it goes on. And then, and then he said, I know, it's fine, just go to the first class. And she goes, are you sure? And he says, yes. Yeah. And then she goes, but my ticket is still, it's coach. I, I'm flying Southwest and it's coach. And, and the, 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 the guy's like, just go through first class. And then she's like, well, I don't know if I can, my, t my ticket. And I, I almost like butt in. I'm like, lady, he just fucking go. Just yeah. fucking go. I was going to punch this bitch right through the fucking line. Are you insane? Are you that fucking robotic? You're so ingrained to the fucking rules of society. You can't fucking, even when someone's telling you, 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 can't, you, you can't even override the previous authority. Jesus. Yeah. My dad used to do something similar to that when we were kids and we'd go on a trip. Yeah. He'd be like, uh, all right, we're boarding early. Uh, you guys have to act like you're under 12. And we'd be like 18. <laughs> like, uh, sir, they're not. He goes, yeah, 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 they're fine, they're fine, they're fine, they're fine. Yeah. And he'd shove us through. Just walk through, just do it. Just do what expedites the process. Make people's lives easier. Stop following authority. Jesus. All right. I'm all pissed off now. All right, what's your last problem? That's a good problem, Jake. Um, Thanks, man. I really thought about it. I worked hard at it. Yeah. Like, I did a bunch of research. I made those dumb clips. You made the clips. This is broad evidence. It's great. Great problem. Um, my next problem, and now I'm the one with minor quibbles this week, is hyphenated names. Okay. All right? I am so tired of yeah, hyphenated this... names. And then I'm fine with that. I don't know. I think I would want the name change. Why? Welcome to the biggest problem in the universe. I'm Maddox with me for Hey, how's it going, everybody? I've got sad news to start the show off. I was I was the biggest problem in the universe last week for like a couple days with armchair psychologists. Yeah. But as of right now, I'm losing to slack with it. Which I don't think is a problem with armchair psychologists, but the listeners disagree with me. Slacktivists are a superset of armchair psychologists. So slacktivists, a lot of them are armchair psychologists, and then they do that and try to make it some kind of action. They try to make a call to action based on their stupid theories. And so that's why it's a superset. I'll tell you, you lost me with the mask right away. It's superset. I'm out. <laughs> Check that. Apparently a Venn diagram is too massive. <laughs> All right, who won? Who won last week? The number one problem from last week was the Nuremberg defense. Yes! Followed by hyphenated names, and then anti-cyclists, and dead last is your bullshit too much swearing problem, Dick. You know, um, I'll talk to that. I was trying to listen to myself last week, and I was listening to myself last week. Yeah. Um, but here's why I brought that in. I didn't get into the show. I didn't get into the show. I didn't get into the show. But the re one of the reasons that I don't swear as much on the show is because I don't want this show to be used specifically like, you know, the magic.
cyclists often are, sometimes you literally can't pass them because of oncoming traffic and you're forced to drive at 15 miles an hour, which is fucking infuriating. What's this guy's name? Derek Stutz. Uh, how's that, Derek? Listen, if you're in a back, if you're riding on the back roads of some city, why don't you move to a real city? Is, that, is this seriously a problem? That, like, you're that's so... The, yeah, well, no, the, that's the solution. <laughs> that's the solution. Not like four-wheel drive around them. Your solution no. is to move to a city. Get a, get, get, why don't you get become part of civilization? Where the fuck are you that there's so many cyclists on the back road? Where are you driving to work? What's your job, idiot? What are um, you just... It says he lives on the route of the Tour de France. I don't know where that is. That's in France. Oh, no. <laughs> so he lives in France? Does he actually... No, 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 he's no, got to be sarcastic. I just made that up. Uh, here comes point number two that Dick omitted like a bitch. I don't know why this is necessary. But, uh, you have to take into account the purpose of a bike ride. Then he goes on and on and says that, uh, you know, bike riders wear skinny, uh, skin tight ups and they travel in packs, making it harder to maneuver around them, and that they act like cars and pedestrians at the same time, which I think is true. Yeah. Because well. they're in the road, and you're not supposed to pass them because they're supposed to be cars, and then they jump on the sidewalk and cause problems there. That's exactly what happens. Uh, Sean's nodding his head. Yeah, because you know. Sean hates cyclists too, because oh. everybody hates them. Oh, Excuse me, bicycle pussies. riders. You, you pussies. So, I, so there, I got a comment about this too, from this guy named Seth Charles Forsman. He said, Maddox, if a cyclist wants to be treated like a car, they should be able to consistently travel at 35 miles per hour and faster. Since yeah. they can't, they should get on the sidewalk and stop impeding traffic. Well, first of all, dickhead, it's illegal to ride on the sidewalk. And when we do, a bunch of crybaby pedestrians bitch about it. So you can't ride on the sidewalk, you can't ride on the street, where are you supposed to ride? You're not. No place. Except, here's the thing, Seth, don't, cyclists don't impede traffic, cars do, okay? Now, cyclists aren't the reason that traffic jams occur. You know what causes traffic jams? Too many fucking cars. The answer to traffic jams isn't more cars. Every cyclist you see on the road is one less car that you don't have to wait behind. Yeah. And all you fucking pussies are, are just crying. Like, they, there has never been a traffic jam caused by a cyclist. Never. Wait a minute, I got a quote. Somebody says, oh, somebody has a good quote for that. Hold on. Uh, 
I can't find it. Oh yeah, this guy, Dustin Singer, says, oh, and Maddox, I promise you, guys riding bikes have killed more people than just about anything. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Just about uh, anything. Yeah. Guys riding bikes. Yeah. Sounds like the argument I just, I literally, not not even joking, not even 45 minutes before this podcast, I just responded to a, a chick who sent me hate mail yeah. about an old article I wrote about whales. And she said that whales do not kill people and they're very peaceful. And they're I got one more comment, and then you might as well go on my comment. Go ahead. Yeah. There. So here's my last comment. Uh, this is from DS. Hi, Dick. If Maddox hates monkeys so much, then why does he look like one? Uh, regards. Good, good That's a pretty good point. Hilarious diss, dipshit. But, uh, you know, I've been compared to lots of things. Monkeys, all you got? Monkey? Pretty funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, real hilarious. Yeah, pretty funny if you're three. Yeah. Like, I've heard better disses from three-year-olds. What have you heard from a three-year-old? Keep saying. Poop stains a, a good diss if you think about it. Yes, that's gross. They're essentially, saying, that they're essentially saying you don't like one. on this podcast, huh? Like episode number two, I was yeah. like, monkeys are a big problem. And now what are they doing? So explain, so you, you can give the setup. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, episode, maybe episode two or episode three. Yeah. Um, you can go go check out the biggest problems and you see it on the list and you click on it and you can listen to the episode. Maddox brought in a problem, which I thought was the stupidest thing I had heard uh, in a long time. That monkeys were a big problem. So this, this week, let me set up where this mon- what a monkey copyright is. I know someone doesn't know what a monkey copyright is. Uh, this guy, this photographer, David Slater, he's a nature photographer, right? Yep. So he packs up all of his equipment and he takes it to a jungle in Indonesia to take the world of nature pictures. Mm-hmm. Right? So whatever you do, whatever you do as a nature photographer, I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, pictures of a bunch of monkeys. Yeah. So he sets all of his crap up like his tripod. Wow. Right. Right. Then some monkeys come along and they start dicking around with his equipment. Yeah. And they take like, because they like pressing buttons, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, so they end up taking all these funny pictures of themselves, like by accident. So it's like a, it's like a monkey selfie. Yeah. Like a stupid grin on the, like you believe that the monkey has an Instagram and he's uploading it like right after he does it. It's fine. Have you seen the picture? Oh yeah, he's got these stupid horse teeth. He, yeah. looks like, he looks like an idiot. Yeah, he looks like an idiot. Yeah. He looks like everyone's selfie, basically. Yeah. So the guy comes back and the image ends up on like the Guardian or something like that. And it's like, okay, cool. Like what a what a jackpot for this photographer, right? Next thing you know, the image ends up on Wikipedia. Right. Okay? So he goes, no, 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 you can't, because everything on Wikipedia is, like, free. Like, once Wikipedia gets their teeth into it, they're like, well, this is free. Like, well, this is... They have a Creative Commons license, which a lot of it has to be either, uh, you can reuse it, you can upload it, you can use it for commercial purposes. Some of it, some of it you have to use attribution, some of it is just public domain. And Wikimedia, Wikipedia is claiming that this picture is public domain. Yes, specifically, so it gets, so he gets it pulled down. Somebody uploads it again. Like, basically, now he's bailing out a canoe that's sinking with the speed of, like, a thousand internet posters. This is this is Wikipedia's response. The file is in public domain because, as the work of a non-human animal, it has no human author in whom copyright is vested. 
So Wikipedia is claiming that the monkey owns the copyright on this picture that clearly belongs to this photo this poor photographer, David Slater. Yeah. So I saw this and I thought, what a goofy news headline. Uh, this will be done. They, like this is obviously a mistake. Mm -hmm. And somebody at Wikipedia is gonna go like, no, obviously we're not that fucking retarded. This is obviously this guy owns this picture. We're not a com we're not a bunch of jackasses. Like right. we don't have monkeys here. Yeah. Clicking buttons to run this organization, or 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 it's actually or this is a controversy, and that there's actually <laughs> another side to this issue. Can you fucking believe that there are people who think this is correct? That this guy actually doesn't own this photo; it belongs to a fucking monkey. <laughs> that this is this is the world. And of course, as soon as I saw the comments, I, I was like, of course I'm the crazy one. Of course I'm crazy for thinking that this poor guy who loves thousands, tens of thousands of dollars of, of equipment into the jungle and manages to capture this amazing picture that so like artistically describes the human condition at this point in technology, of course he gets shafted. Of course he's getting shafted. Of course there's people who think, well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> this poor bastard shows out all this dough and this is his big break. He takes this amazing, he gets this amazing monkey selfie that, you know, it, 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 it's like a once in a career shot. Like, it's so perfect, immediately fucked over. And every fucking armchair, like every internet lawyer is coming out of the scenes, is creeping out of the bits of the internet, posting everybody goes, well, you know, he just, you know, really, you think about it, the monkey did all the work. Yeah. Yeah. The monkey, the monkey composed the shot, the monkey bought the equipment. You know, so, hey, I was reading, uh, great, man, I was reading yeah, it all the hard time. these comments of the the people defending the monkey and they said essentially wikimedia's argued argument is that the monkey pressed the button for the shutter so therefore the monkey owns the photograph but if you think about it <laughs> right yeah right yeah so i made the case unbelievable i was i was, I was looking into this i was thinking well first of all i have three points against this the right. first point is that a contract is not legally binding for any child under the age of 18 due in part to their inability for the child to fairly or accurately interpret his or her rights Right. So a monkey can't be legally binding to any contract for the same fucking reason. Monkeys aren't going to be going to the copyright office at Congress. And if they are, they should get the fuck out. What are they doing there? <sighs> Morons. And then the question of who pressed the, the shutter is moot. It's because just, it's crazy. That's it's absurd. a crazy point. It's a crazy distinction to draw when you're talking about art. Well, so the people, sometimes photographers set up cameras that have procedurally generated shutters. So for example, when they detect that a flash is gonna come on, so for lightning or thunder, so they try to take thunder photography. So right. who owns that picture? The thunder, you fucking idiots? God. Does the thunder only come to the We gotta send to royalties to the Vatican now. Yeah, so every time we do anything, <laughs> anytime lightning takes a picture, we, yeah. have to sh we have to shoot money into space yeah. for space aliens to grab it uh -huh. for causing the lightning or you gotta mail a check to the fucking Vatican. Or you can have the shutter triggered by motion. There's motion detection shutters. So, so you could potentially, what Wikimedia, Wikimedia is suggesting is that there is a public claim on surveillance footage. So if surveillance footage inside a store is triggered by motion, I guess we own that because nobody owns that, the motion owns the copyright. Huh, how wiki? Is that what they're saying? Yeah, you know what? I would like to see, like, let's, let's take, let's take the mechanics out of it. Like, just, just looking at it from an artistic point of view. Right. If, like, uh, okay, um, you know the, you know the movement, the ready-made sculpture movement? No, uh, no. Okay, Marcel Duchamp, he's like some fucking artist. I don't want to sound like him. It's it's cool. like he, uh, <laughs> he got a, a year in there,
direction so what do you think of this i was thinking about this problem the other day like uh essentially the monkey stole this guy's camera used it and then the guy retrieved his camera so the claim is that the monkeys own the photographs that they took with it right. however it's still mm -hmm. his camera what if somebody steals your laptop and just to you know just play devil's advocate here they go home and they sit down and they write the next great american novel like they write a novel on your stolen laptop i think that the person who stole the laptop still owns the rights to that novel. No. No way. Well, just because you use something stolen doesn't mean the person whose property it is, you... You know, if you use the shovel that you stole to build a well, house, they, don't, they can't just come take your yeah, house. Yeah, but if you steal a gun and you shoot somebody with it, is there, like, a thing where if the person didn't secure the gun enough, then they're partly liable for that? I mean, we're in California, so I gotta assume that something that, ja that asinine is probably true. Potentially, but that's not a creative expression. I think I'm talking specifically about something... <laughs> well, well, you could paint in the medium of dead bodies, I suppose. Uh, but I'm talking specifically about creative expression or any kind of creation. So, again, if you stole some construction equipment, built a house, do they then come take the house because you you, you no, I don't, stole I don't the equipment? So. Don't so what about the novel? So what, what about the novel that somebody, somebody wrote on your stolen your, laptop? Yeah, it's your novel still. It's your novel. Yeah. So it's because you use the tool to do it. Like right. the process, the artistic process is what you copyright, not the not the tools you use to do it. Right. So so to play devil's advocate, couldn't you then say that okay, the monkey does have a case? Because, well, uh, you know, no, because it is a fucking monkey. <laughs> That's why. Right. Well, Look, you win. You win this because yeah. you were right about monkeys. I shit yeah. on you before, but you warned us all that the monkeys were coming to take our jobs. They're yep. taking our jobs, these monkeys. Taking our women. No, dogs are taking our women. Yeah. Did you yeah, no. saw this thing that women are like replacing their need for babies yeah. with little dogs? Dogs. And the only reason women need men is to have babies. <laughs> yeah. True. And why else would you want a guy around? Yeah, right? Right, if you're right. a woman, why would you want a guy coming into your house, partying, mm -hmm. messing up your stuff? That's what we're gonna do. Breaking your shitty furniture that you bought on your parents' credit card. Mm -hmm. and eat your food, eat your fancy fucking salad, not even know, no, or care about yeah. what's in it. Your uh, macrobiotic, organic bullshit. We're just gonna shovel it in our mouth and poop it out. Yeah. A hours later. Not watch six hours of Netflix every night. No, because we're out doing shit, building shit. That's what we're doing. Well, yeah. that really pissed me off, that monkey thing. Yeah, well, and rightly so. Uh, monkeys are stupid. I warned all you idiots Man, and dude. downvoted it. It was episode number three. Go listen to it. I made my case against monkeys. So they're to, in the way. To make up for it, everyone should upvote my monkey <laughs> copyright problem. Dick. Not your problem. Don't hide it. You know what? If I if the monkeys don't go up in rank significantly, I'm gonna be really pissed off at the world. I got. I brought in a quote from an expert. Uh, oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah. This. Uh, what is she? Uh, June. June Berserk. An executive director of the <laughs> current, current chance, Center of Law, some, some exec, whatever, at Columbia Law School. All okay. right. Uh, listen to what this bra said. It's a great final exam question for a copyright class. This this question is a uh, great a great final exam question. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, because That's it comes up all the time. This is a great case study, huh, idiot? Yeah. So a guy gets dicked over by Wikipedia. What is it legal? Dur. Um, there has to be under the copyright law. As it's been interpreted, there has to be a human authorship for there to be a copyright. Okay, which there is. Okay, so there is that. 
So I would say there isn't copyright on the photo. That's what she says. There's that's no photo. Okay, so what about, again, what about procedurally generated? What if yeah. you just set up a shutter to, to go off in 10 minutes or whatever? Or it, it's just a camera that someone set up a long time ago? It's a security camera or something? Who owns that footage? Because what somebody if, didn't press the shutter. What if he had just said, yeah, I gave my camera to the monkey so they could dick with it? Yeah. To see what would happen. The monkey promised he would give it back and that I owned all the rights to the image. Yeah, say the monkey told me. The monkey told me. <laughs> the monkey told me. Why yeah. ask the monkey? Oh, he's not, he's not feeling like he's not in the mood to talk. By the way, you can't force the monkey to talk. Fifth Amendment, right? You can't, he, he can't he incriminate, himself. incriminate himself. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he broke any, he's probably trespassing. The monkey. Well, Are you allowed to be living in the jungles of Indonesia? Probably not. Well, the guy. He probably owes somebody something. Owes some taxes to the Indonesian government. When he clicked on that dickhead, besides that monkey should be a millionaire with that photo. Whatever. Yeah. Fuck that monkey. I warned all you idiots and you didn't listen. Now, uh, that's it. Good. All right. Let me move on to my first problem. Female genital mutilation. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Getting this right into it. Okay. Here we go. So, I've been thinking a lot, and a lot of the problems we bring in are either neutral or male-centric. And I was thinking, what is a problem that actually is a real serious problem that a lot of uh, women have to deal with? Okay. And by a lot of women, uh, guess how many... So, I, I heard this stat a long time ago on NPR, and it was so surprising that not only... I was doubting it, but the the correspondent doubted it. So she had to look this information oh, it up. Because it's so big? It's so big. Okay. What well, let me guess. Then. Yeah, yeah. You guess. What percentage? So the country Egypt is, uh, is an Arabic country, but it's also very uh, modern. It's very Western. Uh, they have a lot of the same laws and, and uh, rights that we have. Okay. What percentage would you think that of women in Egypt have uh, female castration? Percentage? Yeah. Okay. What do I know about Egypt? Uh, you know that's where Indiana Jones was. Um, does that help? No, I don't think he was. <laughs> well, in in what? Yeah, because Salas. No, in one, because Salas said the Nazis had oh. Shanghaied every figure in Cairo. Uh, 80 percent. Higher. What? Higher than eighty percent. John, any guess? It's actually ninety-one percent. Ninety-one percent of women in Egypt have female castration done. Oh. Though. And for, right. for people who don't quite know the procedure, I mean, they are literally cutting the clitoris out of out of the women, or they mutilate them. All right. And it's it, it gets even worse in Sierra Leone, eighty eight percent in Guinea, ninety six percent, ninety six percent of Holy women. Shit. Seventy four percent in Ethiopia. So combined, that's over one hundred and twenty five million women and girls in Africa and the Middle East. According to UNICEF. Wait, 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 how many million? 125 million. 125 million? Yep. And if you think this is just like a Muslim issue or, or, or a religious thing, it's not. There's 144,000 women in the UK and Wales who are at risk because their parents were born to, uh, they're, they're, excuse me, the kids were born to Tunisian parents or Ethiopian parents. So a lot of times the parents will fly them out when they become adolescents around the age, uh, you know, 13, 14 years old and they get their their uh their clips removed they get them they get oh cut. my god all right now so this is that so can we focus on that number for a second or am i interrupting your thing no go ahead that's i mean that's twice that's twice as many people than that watch the super bowl isn't that right like six i think so people watch yeah the super bowl? well that's yeah. half the country that's half the country of the u.s yeah oh half the country my of the US. god that's over 60 million in egypt and ethiopia alone those two countries alone Oh, that's disgusting. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's like, it's outrageous. I didn't know it was that big of a problem. And I don't think even a lot of people know it's that big of a problem in the U.S. Especially feminists out here who are, who are, who are yelling about Photoshop on cosmopolitan issues. Hey, idiots, if you want to take a cause, take up a cause and go to Ethiopia, go to Africa, go to Egypt, and try to solve this problem. And this, this, this problem isn't rooted in religion. It's not. It's not rooted in men just trying to control women either. It's, it's, it's just... So UNICEF actually asked people, they, they told yeah, them. Yeah, I was going to ask, why do they do this? Yeah, the presumption, it says here, this is from UNICEF, um, from an NPR article, it says, the presumption has been that men often condone female mutilation, but when we look at the data, it doesn't support that. Many men and boys want the practice to stop, too. The problem, yeah, yeah this, uh, this lady, Monetti, I think she's the director at UNICEF, she says, the problem, Monetti says, is that communities, even couples, don't talk about the issue. The desire to end the practice is hidden, she says. Men often don't know what women think and vice versa. 
So about 20% of women across all 29 countries surveyed have undergone the extreme procedure in which the genitals are cut and then the vagina is sewn shut. What? Yeah. They sew the vagina You're shut. You're Like, you know this? John, Sean's nodding, but so you, it, you've heard this, yeah. Okay, why? Why the fuck would you do that? Right, so here's, here's the interesting uh, part here in the article. Is some people mistakenly frame mutilation as an Islamic practice, says UNICEF Deputy Executive Director, but it's not, she says. There are many Islamic communities that don't practice it. It's not written anywhere in the Bible or the Quran. So this is not a religious practice. I thought it was. No, it's not. Instead, the practice is linked to poverty and lack of education, the report finds. And a girl is much more likely to be cut if her mother was. So this is just something uh, that poor people do because everyone's always done it. It's always been in so that they just are you doing kidding it. me? That's it. I thought the reason that we didn't get involved with this is because it was like a huge religious war where it happened. That's what I thought, but it's not. A lot of Muslim, in fact, the majority of Muslim people don't do this. This is just in certain countries and certain communities because it's been the practice for so long. That's hard for me to believe. Yeah, well, I gotta hear. I gotta hear like a Muslim person tell me what you're saying to well, know for sure. You well, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's a that's a mouthful. It's, they're just doing it because they've always done. Because it. they've always done it. So one of the oh, one of goodness. the examples yeah, in, in Iraq, it used to be as high as about thirty percent, and currently it's it's dropped over the, the last few decades. It's about nine percent of women in Iraq uh, still get this procedure done, oh. and it's not for any particular. I mean, if it was a religious thing, Iraq, if anything, has become more staunchly religious. Yeah, but it's become a more staunchly religious state, and yet female genital mutilation has dropped in that same time to about nine percent. So it's just a tradition that people have always done, and nobody really knows why. I mean, can you give George W. Bush some credit for dropping that number? <laughs> no? No. Oh. So it's only his fault for invading on bad info, but... Well, he did... No, no. Well, something I'll, I'll good out of it. And, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, he did He did lower that number by also lowering the population in Iraq. So uh, there you have that. Well, you brought in a disgusting <laughs> problem. <laughs> um, it's a real problem. This is an actual I had no real idea. problem. It was, I had no idea it was just, uh, just like a knowledge thing. Yeah, is it's like a superstition, or they they just like two mils. Damn it, something to do. Well, so there's one woman in this NPR article who went out. She she's a very outspoken critic of female genital mutilation because when she was 13 or 14 years old, she's I, I believe she's from Somalia, and her parents flew her out there, and she said she woke up in some dingy. I got dude, I got to tell you, this is making me want to throw up. Yeah, it's, like, it's all a really rough time. Yeah, no, it's good. So they, they flew her in this dingy hospital room, and she said she wasn't even sure to go to the hospital. And she said that this woman came into this room who was dressed not as a doctor, but as she can recall what you would imagine an African witch to look like. And so she came in there and mutilated the genitals. A lot of the time, though, like in Egypt, 70% uh, of these, these female genital mutilations are done by doctors. So especially the, the poor people, they don't want to question the authority of doctors. So if a doctor's doing it, it must be right. Right? Yeah. It's kind of like it's kind of like male. I mean, this this isn't at all uh, comparable in, in terms of the scope of, of lasting damage that it does. But it's kind of like male circumcision, where everybody just kind of does it. Do you know the reason people do male circumcision? Well, okay. So let me say that I I know what you're talking about. I know the big debate. Now that we're talking about penises, I can talk. I know what's yeah. going on more. I can talk more about this. Uh, I know that there's controversy on whether you should do it or not, but then I've, and, and it seems like people are pretty staunchly against it, and like, I've heard the arguments where the cleaning isn't so bad, and you lose all this sensation if you get circumcised, and it's like, it's right. like a torturous experience, right? I guess. And it's, but then I hear people who are like, late in life, and they get circumcised, and they're like, yeah, that's all crazy. Just get it done. Do it to your kids. I'm like, I don't know what to think on the circumcision thing. Yeah, I don't know what to think either, and there's actually a really funny video about this on College Humor that talks about the history of circumcision. It's a three minute video and it is fantastic. It's so well done. It talks about how circumcision just kind of came about and be because uh, it was some superstition or somebody somebody believed something and they just started doing it and it's always been done just because that's what all, everybody always, has always done. And to be totally cynical, some people say now that circumcision and female genital mutilation occurs because it's a big industry. Doctors make a lot of money on circumcision and female genital mutilation. Uh, well, the latter is awful. That's got to stop, right? The, the circumcision, I don't know. I'm still, uh, I'm still undecided. Because people who are against it are so passionate about it, and that always makes me suspicious. Yeah. And it's always the, the most outspoken people about this taxation. Or not taxation, circumcision. I'm talking about 
they're, they're mostly hippies. Here's what I think about, you know, after um, <laughs> after doing the Men of the Women stuff and going on the radio and just getting screamed at all the time. Yeah. Like I've done, and, and I'm sure you've done the same thing. You go on the radio all the time and people tell you what a jerk you are. Right. And this and that, about uh, how much you must hate women, blah, blah, blah. I always get the question, well, what do you think about feminism? Like everything they're doing, like trying to get women to make more money in the first world. There should be 50-50 female CEOs, blah, 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 blah. Don't you think that's great? And like, Shouldn't like shouldn't their sole purpose be to stop this? Yeah. This is so much worse than you make a little bit then you're not making as much money as a man allegedly, or there's not enough chicks in video games or comics. Like where the yeah. fuck is the outcry for this? This is why I think that people are getting giving a backlash to modern third wave feminism in America because they're obsessed with these minor minutiae. These fucking social justice warriors on Tumblr are complaining because someone said bitch on Twitter. Who yeah. gives a shit? Go to Papua New Guinea. Go to uh, uh, Sierra Leone. Go to these places where women are having acid thrown in their faces still. Wait, is that a religious thing? Uh, it's actually based in superstition. They do witch, witch hunts. That's the same thing? Yeah. Oh. Well, no, no, that's a different thing. This is actually women are getting acid. No, I know about the acid thing. Yeah, because of witch trials. And this is something that feminists aren't taking up their cause for. Yeah. But of course, when it comes to not enough female video game characters, let's talk about how Samus is, is has been oppressed and has become a sexual object. Let's I know, talk about a, a fake cartoon fucking character. And you think this is what's causing female genital mutilation? In these cultures, they didn't have video games. They didn't grow up, grow up the, with playing the same video games that we did. Oh. And yet, we don't have female genital mutilation out here. Or if we do, it's extremely low. It's less than one percent. Well, that's why I have a hard time taking them seriously. Because taking who? Like, any? Well, any one of the cause, I guess. But feminism <laughs> specifically, because it's like, I mean, you're you're like rearranging. Uh, like you want a little bit more money, but you're saying that's like a, empowering women. No, it's not. It's empowering you. And like yeah. people who are exactly like you, just say it. Say it for what it is. You just want more of stuff. You're not crusading for anybody. You're not crusading for human rights because there's 200 million women out there getting their genitals shaved off. Yeah, and their right? and their vaginas. Uh, so that's, that's weird. It's man. so disgusting. It's like it's it's worse than medieval. Like if you wanted to torture someone in medieval time, and by the way, that is the most sensitive area that I can think of on a woman's body next to her heart. <laughs> what are they doing about that? Nothing. There's no cure. There's no, no, they just keep hearts. crying. No, I, no. I think they do that in L.A. <laughs> that so I heard that. I heard that that, was, I heard that was happening. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of just cold-hearted zombies walking around here. But yeah. uh, other than that, anyway, man. Yeah, that's my problem. Pretty big problem. But yeah, that's what I want to talk about. It's Damn a real me. serious, it's a heavy topic, and it's something I, I don't think we've, we've really delved into. And uh, by well, the way, I think of all the problems we've brought in so far, this probably actually deserves to be number one on the list. Yeah, slow, slow down. <laughs> I mean, that's easy for you to say, you're already number one. But, I'm curious, I'm sorry, 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 I'm sor
crave it's because it's painful to them. Yeah, of course. So that could that's gonna totally fuck up the whole dating dynamic and if you fuck up the desire for men and anything else in your life. You have all these psychosexual disorders and somebody who thinks this not to do it you literally have to go to these communities and educate them and say that the way that you're able to educate them convince me okay I'm I'll tell you. Okay. okay so I come to them and I say hey listen this is actually going to You gotta say, look, man, you don't do this, these broads are gonna be out of control. Man. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. You gotta tell the kids that if you don't do this. This is what, this is what the African world is. They get the kids when they're in the middle of And you gotta stop this because you're stop doing this. You know, you know, seriously, the problem is that over, I, I think I read this stat, over 99% of the majority of the world in the country. Kind of guy from the late 90s, yeah. but I think calling is cool. You're an old dick. 
Yeah, I'm an old, well, when I tell people that I've called someone, they look, especially women, they look horrified. Exactly, they should be. Now, this is, a, this is an embarrassing story, but the reason I'm using a phone, I don't know what I'm using but I'm bringing it in because I think this happens to a lot of people. And I think it's a, I think people are setting themselves up for disaster by not possibly to the phone. Do you really think so? No, it's not. By not talking, first of all, in terms of communication, in terms of the types of communication, I would list talking on the phone as one of the most inconsiderate. The, the most inconsiderate form of communication, I think, is talking on the phone. Because you're telling, you're saying to somebody, hey, this is urgent, I have to get through to you, drop whatever you're doing, stop yeah. reading the email, stop working, stop yeah. doing whatever you're doing, and pick up the phone and talk to me like I'm a fucking boss, like I'm your executive right now. You mean it's shit? You're yes. just kind of sitting there and no. you throw stuff on a back burner and have like a nice conversation with somebody? Never. 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 And even when I am talking to somebody on the other phone, I've got apps running in the background, I've got my email, I've got my... I don't want to talk about it. No, you're the fucking one. It's the worst. What are you doing? 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 you are basically uh you're basically like a, a gray person with no personality and you get absolutely nothing in the form of like context and meaning it's just words that's because words not... that you can make them mean whatever you want you are going to fight with a guy in the text you know exactly yeah. what i'm talking about you and i'm a great writer and a great order and if you say no one you know exactly what i'm saying perfect vocabulary perfect emotion so we go the reason why we're going to work out we're going to do the same thing interpreting it because I diffuse bombs I diffuse situations I know how to bring people down off the ledge I just do that I do that I Some stupid game. Okay? 
Right. Now, who do you think said that? Um, let's go with uh, Obama, uh, Steve Jobs, and uh, Steve Jobs. <laughs> Obama, yeah, he's a uh, pretty, pretty oh, inspiring quote, right? No, that's a, first of all, when I heard that quote, I thought immediately, personally. Whoever wrote that is a huge person. It's not like a breakup. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I changed the last one to... Uh, it's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. So, whoever said that sounds like a huge person. And it's wrong to a trick. But if it's if Obama and Steve Jobs are in the mix, I'm thinking it's gotta be... Well, Obama... Obama usually doesn't come out with weepy apologies. And if he does... does no, not like that. that. I've never heard that. Okay. That's really bad. That's really bad. Okay. And if it's Obama, I'll eat my words. But. So you think it's somebody who's like really weepy and a pussy and is yeah. like, is what? Really like tender person? Yeah. Like who? Like, uh, well, I'm just thinking of people I know in real life, but as for like, oh, Sean Penn. There you go. Sean okay. Penn. Yeah. Sean Penn. So like a, a humanitarian, but also like a, a, an actor and kind of like a real soulful guy, right? Yeah, very liberal. Okay, I want you to play mystery quote, that sound clip I gave you. Okay. This is who actually said it. Charles Manson. Oh, wow. They're not being more perceptive. They're not being aware enough. They're not understanding. For uh, being stupid. Here's where it gets good. Maybe I should have killed 500 people, then I would have felt better. Yeah. <laughs> so, enjoy your text. When you get a text, you can tell immediately that that guy's crazy, right? Bravo. When that voice hits the... Hits your ears, you yeah. know immediately that he's a psychopath. Yeah, well, no, actually, I thought it was Willie Nelson when I first started playing the clip. I'm like, wow. Yeah, well, it's Charles Manson. Yeah, well. You know what, though? It had, you dropped off the end, though. If you played, if I heard that first start of the part of the clip, you didn't tell it was Charles Manson, I would have just Willie Nelson. Well, he's not going to text that part. He's just going to text the oh, first part. Because it's going to get cut off by That's, the character limit? Yes. He's going to tweet only that much. I got more. Okay. That's a great uh, So you guess which one is the Charles Manson quote. Okay. All right. You can stop doing that. Sean, you guess, too. Uh, okay. Uh, here, I'm gonna, I got three quotes about pain. Yeah. Turn your wounds into wisdom. That's one. Pain's not bad, it's good. It teaches you things. And one word frees us all the weight and pain of life. That word is love. Which one do you think is a Charles Manson quote? Oh boy. So pain wounds us? What was the Turn your wounds into wisdom. Turn your wounds into wisdom. Second one's pain's not bad, it's good. It teaches you things. And the third one is one word frees all of us the weight and pain of life. That word is love. Sean, what do you think? You think you got Manson dialed in? I'll go with the last one just because he mentions love and that would okay. be counterintuitive. Yeah, that's the mis- that's, that's true. That's yeah, true. That's, that's the misdirect. misdirect. Yeah, so, I, so that's that's the word in his text that tells you this guy's crazy, right? Yeah. That word? Yeah. Yeah, that was Sophocles, okay. Greek philosopher, <laughs> you right. know, a brilliant man in, of antiquity. Right. Charles Manson was the, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, Oprah was the first one to turn your wounds into wisdom. Okay. Yeah, I was going to get the second one after, after yeah. Manson was, pain's not bad, it's good. That's true, though. I agree with that. Absolutely agree with that. Yes, but you couldn't pick the crazy psychopath just based on the words. Yeah, but Dick, if you get a text from somebody, you have a history with them, and you have some context. Unless you met somebody in a bar, and that's the first fucking text they sent you, then yes, they're psychotic. But even then, you know that you just met them, and if they're sending you crazy texts like, Hey, pain isn't bad, it's good, it teaches you things, that's a red fucking flag. Okay, what if they're texting you something like this? Okay. Dogs never bite me, just humans. Animals shouldn't be hunted, and nature shouldn't be disturbed to benefit the whims of mankind. And, the third one, I ask people why they have deer heads on their walls. They say it's because it's such a beautiful animal. <laughs> Which one is the Charles Manson quote, you guys? You're so great at texting each other all the time and calling is such a pain in the ass. Surely you'd be able to find the psychopath in these words. Yeah, all right, Dick. Let, let me tell you which one Charles Manson is based on my texting history with him. Uh, I'm gonna guess the the one with the the where humans hurt me and animals don't. Is that is, what was that one of the quotes? The first one? Dogs never bite me, just humans. Just humans. Okay. I'm gonna say the first one. Maddox is the first one. Sean, what do you think? What's the second one again? Second one is animals shouldn't be hunted and nature shouldn't be disturbed, even destroyed, to benefit the whims of mankind. No, I'll go with that one. Sean, that's the Manson quote. Good for you. Yeah. The first one, yours, uh, Maddox, yeah. that was Marilyn Monroe. Uh, she's a psycho. 
Well, based on the number of psychotic women who quote her in their profiles. You know, oh, you know her famous quote, right? Yeah. She said, if you don't treat, if you don't like me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best. Yeah, exactly. Every psycho chick I've ever dated, everyone I've ever gone out with uh, uh, on a date, whatever, has had that as, as a profile. So, you know what? Let's not discount her as being psychotic either. You want to do one more? Yeah. I got Let's one, do one more. more. All right, one more. Um, this one's about being crazy. Okay. A question that sometimes drives me, a question that sometimes drives me hazy, am I or are the others crazy? Number one. A long time ago, being crazy meant something. Nowadays, everybody's crazy. Number two. Number three, being crazy isn't enough. What do you think? What do you think, boys? Mm. Which one? Which one do you want to answer a phone call from? Yeah. Well, no one. If any of my crazy ass friends sent me this, I wouldn't be friends with them. Yeah. You know, yeah, I would have looked a long time ago unfriended Charles Manson if he was writing crazy shit like this. You would never know though because you just text with him all the time and you've not guessed a single Manson quote. I wouldn't so you have not been able to identify the psycho. No, you said I got the last one. No, that was Sean. You what? got the Marilyn Monroe quote last time, oh, Dick Frame. Oh yeah, and then I convinced myself that she was psycho. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> what do you think, Sean? Which one? I'm going the third one because it okay. implies that he wants motivation. Being crazy isn't enough. Sean, you think that's Manson? But Maddox? Did, what was that first quote? That he, that first quote was, a question that sometimes drives me hazy, am I or are the others crazy? It's gotta be that one because okay. he's actually looking at the rationale of what he's doing. Right, okay. So, let's see, Maddox is texting the guy that you think is crazy. Yeah. Uh, Sean, that's Dr. Seuss. Beloved children's author. Being that. crazy isn't enough. Maddox, you've selected Einstein. Oh, great. Yeah, Manson was actually the middle one. A long time ago, being crazy meant something now, David. Well, I'm, gr I'm glad that Einstein had so much self-doubt. Yeah, look, that's that's my game. That's my point. You can't tell who's crazy or not just by texting them. you got to call them on the phone. you got yeah. problems with your life, call people on the fucking phone. Another uh, classic non-problem, right, Dick? <laughs> but... Uh, Speaking of problems, let's move on to my last. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, this is a really important one, so I, br I brought in two heavy topics this time. Um, Beats by Dre. <laughs> okay. It's my second problem this week. So, you know, for those who don't know, Beats by Dre are those giant headphones that everybody seems to be walking around with these days. Yeah. Those are the, the white ones with the red B on the side. Yeah, they look cool. Oh, great, Dick. You're part of the problem. So, those things, first of all, are giant thief magnets. Have you heard of it? Like, okay. crime has gone up because of these stupid headphones, because they cost $400. Crime has gone up because of the headphones? Yeah. This is a, this is a report from Chicago, isn't it? A far more brutal incident in Chicago left Charles hospitalized after his Beats by Dre headphones were snatched from his head last Saturday afternoon. He was left unconscious, beaten, and bruised with a black eye. I am going to be afraid for anybody that I see on the streets with their, their flashing headphones. <laughs> <laughs> so that guy got his headphones stolen? <laughs> got his headphones stolen oh, and, and his ass beat. And then he went on, in the, this actually pisses me off and it may be a problem at some point that I bring in, but then he went on and said, well I had three guardian angels come save me afterwards, they came in and helped me. And, it, and he kept referencing these guardian angels, like, yeah, thanks to my guardian angels, I'm here today. I'm like, hey, dickhead, they're not guardian angels, because if they were, they wouldn't have let your fucking headphones gotten stolen, and you got your ass beat. Yeah. Guardian angels save you before the shit happens. So anyway. I'd well, uh, like to hope so. Anyway. So, you'd like to hope so. So, here's the problem with the, with the beats, actually. These are giant fucking headphones, and they have noise cancellation, and they're a distraction. Listen to this. This is the ad from the same news report. There also is a, a advice not to wear headphones because you can't hear if someone is coming up to you. You're not really aware of your surroundings without your audio. Exactly, and that's what Chicago police say not to wear them while you're walking on the street. It can be distracting, and that's exactly what happened in this case. Uh, that's the sh that's the news tip. Yeah, that's don't wear beats so you can hear people coming up to rob you. Yeah, that's what are you gonna do? Run? That's from My Fox Chicago. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, they're saying, they're saying, so this is actually from Gawker, so Gawker has an article that says how to get your beats not stolen. They have an article. They say, if you pay hundreds of dollars for your headphones, make sure they don't have an easily identifiable markings on the outside that would alert thieves to that fact. So they're saying buy your expensive ass beats and then cover up the markings on the side? Is this really a problem? This is Are what people getting their beats stolen oh, all, yeah. around the, all around the world? Yeah, all the time. And then here's the other tip. 
Be aware of your surroundings at all times. Don't wear headphones. <laughs> This is actually from Gawker. They're saying that those expensive headphones that you spent a fortune on, four hundred dollars, don't wear them. But that's the entire purpose of Beats. Exactly. Their second biggest selling point on their website is put the world on hold. So I have another clip of actually. This is a guy on the New York subway, and he got his Beats stolen. Now, is it, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna come out and say I am glad this guy got his Beats stolen of because course. he's one of the obnoxious pricks who's sitting there with these giant cans on his head. Singing as loud as he can, annoying Aww. other passengers. Listen to this. Here's the clip. Someone standing right next to him had enough. Maybe he didn't even want to steal them. He just wanted him to shut the fuck up. And he took his beats. So. Sounds like a self-correcting problem, though. Like, you hate the Beats because they're annoying, but all these annoying dickheads are getting their Beats stolen. Yeah, and guess what? Now you're, get, now you're getting even more annoying dickheads walking around with Beats. The people who stole them. You don't well, want those jackasses walking around with them. They look cool, though. Have you? Uh, you garbage. gotta admit they look cool. They look stupid. They're giant. You look like a fucking robot. You're not a DJ, dipshit. You're walking along the street. Put your fucking earbuds in and shut the fuck up. Who? Do, why do you need $400? What kind of... Sound fidelity do you need walking on the streets of New York or Chicago? There's traffic running by, there's trains running by, there's people talking, there's cyclists. And by the way, you need to be paying attention to all those people, all those people in traffic. If you have these giant cans on your head, you're not going to hear anything. You're not going to hear shit. You're going to walk into a manhole like a moron. Yeah, but I'd rather somebody be on beats than be looking at their cell phone. Great, but that's right. not the problem. That's not the. That's a false dichotomy. You're not really. That's not the choice I here. Don't know what that is. Okay, that's not the choice here. So. Uh, the Beats are actually kind of shitty headphones, too. According to ZDNet, Beats by Dre headphones get deemed for noise cancellation performance, 40%, and an uneven sound score, 25%, with overpowering bass. Fixia, yeah. There's a website called Fixia, Fixia.com, and they did a report. It's like a blog that does uh, reviews of these headphones. They say that with randomly varying highs and lows producing music that doesn't sound cohesive, Beats by Dre can be notoriously spotty across all genres of music. They tend to drown out all the mid-tone, all the mid-range, and the high-end because they're so bass-heavy. But perhaps even more worrying was that the level of headphone malfunction is 15%. Are you serious? Yeah. 15% wow. of those headphones malfunction. You say it's like a lot. It's a, high, it's a high, really high failure rate. Yeah. 15% of headphones with no moving parts, by the way, except for maybe the noise cancellation, which Ooh. require batteries. You know, I did read that um, all these reviews are like reviewing these headphones based on like all types of of genres of music yeah. and the reason they're so successful is that they reproduce like a specific genre of music like whatever the techno edm the tween wave stuff the hip-hop yeah with like such heavy bass and they scoop out all the mid-tones and it's like just the beep blue beeps and whatever that's why they're so big no that's, that's so, why they're so but that's why the reviews don't make any sense because they're reviewing it across this huge spectrum of music and it's they're specifically made to listen to like the popular music. Though. Yeah, but hip hop has a lot of. In there's a lot of interesting hip hop out there with a lot of interesting things going on in the mid range, and they're not. They're just drowning all of that out. Well, there's according to Dre, he's the one making the beats. Yeah, well, you know what it is. This is just Nike in headphones. This is you're, you're buying Air Jordans except to put on your ears. And by the way, here's what you actually need. Here's what every Beats by Dre headphone should come with: a neck brace, because these fucking headphones weigh a pound. Do they really? Almost. They weigh 14 ounces, which is 0.88 pounds. Have you listened to them? Oh, a Beats by... Yeah, I put it on a demo. Yeah, it's, you know, it, it sounds fine. But the, uh, all the reviews I've read, the top review on Amazon for the Beats by Dre headphones, uh, the red one, says that they sound about as good as $60 Sony's or any of the $60, like Sennheiser. You can, you can buy two Sennheiser high-quality headphones for the cost of... I'm wearing Sennheiser right now. Sennheiser's. It's Sennheiser's. Sennheiser's? Sennheiser's? Yeah, but they yeah. look so cool. They don't. They, they look stupid. All, no, they're cool looking. They're all punchery, and they got those circles, and like, like these Sennheiser's right now I'm wearing, no one's, I'm not going to get laid with these. With these giant puffy things it, it inside. Doesn't, it doesn't matter what you wear, you're not going to get laid. But I mean, Yeah, because I call everybody. That's the yeah, point. you call everyone like a sucker. No, but in the future, things don't get bigger in the future, they get smaller and better. In the future, those don't look futuristic, they look past as shit. I would see someone in the 50s wearing those things and think, oh, what a moron, look at that this giant cans he's wearing. Oh man, <laughs> go I, really, to, I really want some beats, they look cool. You dummy. You go, go to the UN, go, uh, there's a website, go to, um, by Dre. Go to Google Images and search for UN Communicator Transponder, whatever, the, the Communicator uh, uh, Translator. 
and that one's awesome. giant boxes. They look bigger than the biggest walkie-talkie you've ever seen. And that's what they use to talk into yeah, the wood was at the UN a good to translate match. Their, their discussions in real yeah. time. Pretty chap. That's, that's what these beasts look like. It's got this big like. knot in it These here. giant monstrosities on your head. I think you would look cool wearing beats. Don't touch it. Pull your finger to it. Cool. Gives you some nice white beats. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. You need to stick out. Too, yeah, a hoodie. Uh, you wearing a hoodie? Yeah, yeah dude. You, you can look cool. Off. You guys stop dressing me. <laughs> right? Stop dressing so me with your So what's your eyes. problem with the beats? They're shitty headphones? They're shitty all? headphones. They weigh a lot and they're they're distracting. So they're distracting them. I'm not, but then all these idiots walking around the streets and bumping into people and increasing hey, crime. Boo-boo. What's up, dude? Increasing crime. Yeah. What up, this now? is a shitty reason to you hate beasts. a shitty beasts. reason to hate beasts. <laughs> no, no, these are uh, these are god awful headphones. They look terrible. <laughs> They're giant. How can you defend these? These are these look. Because I think they look cool. Well, it looks cool, but they're giant. Because they're cool. so like clean, man. You like they're cl- clean, like cans on your no. ears, and they got that cool thing. They got that cool B. That looks cool. The definition of clean, like if you look down the ocean and you see, you see, there's nothing on the horizon. That's a clean skyline. If there's anything jutting out from it, that's not clean. These are giant monstrosities jutting out from the side of your head, like a fucking idiot. You're not a robot. Get that shit off there. Stop trying to become a cyborg by putting four hundred dollar cans on your head. You know, that sounds like it looks cool too. Daft Punk looks pretty cool. They look like cyborgs. Oh yeah, I'm sure Daft Punk has a neck brace under there too. Maybe they're listening to Beats during the concerts. That doesn't sound like a, a, a big reason to hate Beats. They're increasing uh, crime. What else you got? Distraction. Theft, distraction. Increasing crime. They look awful, and they they are hurting people's ears. By the way, all these like this oh, heavy bass. They're hurting people's yeah, ears okay. now. All I'm right. really stretching with that one because I don't give a shit. You know what? Go ahead. Buy your beats. Eat your French fries. I and do want your dogs. Beats. I would Idiots. really like a pair of beats. Except I found out that they cost 14 bucks to make. And they sell them for like 300 or 400 dollars, and they cost 14 dollars to make. Yeah, you're supporting this brand, this label, Apple. No, it's well, Apple, Apple bought them now. Them. Yeah, Apple owns the owns them now. What a great buy, man. Yeah, I guess. But you, I'll tell you why it's a great buy. Yeah, no, go ahead. Because it's the same. It. Yeah, I'll, I know why. Because why? it's the same suckers who buy these, uh, the, who overspend on Apple for the luxury brand, are going to overspend for Beats for the luxury brand. It's no, the same sucker it's market. Not, that's not why. They, I'm telling you, that's not why I think it's a great buy. It's a great buy yeah. because for three billion dollars, Apple has just bought an ad on every fucking prime time karaoke show, every sporting event, like every interview. Anytime there's beats anywhere, they're all over TV, that's now an Apple ad. I don't know. Every man. fucking celebrity, every shitball celebrity, like for kids, is wearing beats all the time. That's now an Apple ad. Well, that's you, why they bought it. You could know that I don't I disagree because for three billion dollars, Dick, that's an awful lot of ad space you could buy. You could you could cover New York entirely with Apple banners, which they already have, you fucking idiots with your with your Apple store on Fifth Avenue. That's a different kind of ad. This right. ad is like gets in kids gets in kids' brains. Like they're watching Richard Sherman ranting after a game, and what's he doing? He's wearing beats. Is he? You I can't know. buy that. You can't. Yeah, of course he's. He's cool. No, All cool not. people are wearing beats. Why is he wearing beats and ranting after the game? Because he's take Richard Sherman. No, he's wearing them because it's cool to wear them. You know what doesn't look cool? Those stupid headphones they wear in the NFL. I was just thinking, those things are giant monstrosis, uh, monstrous, and that's what these beats look like, those giant headphones in the NFL. What are you talking about, coach headphones? Yeah, the coach headphones. They look stupid. They're equipment. Stupid as shit. Exactly, it's equipment. You look like you should work in construction, not walk around listening to hip-hop. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here with your fucking beats and hoodies and your bullshit. Fuck your stupid headphones. You know what? You can get you can get better audio fidelity out of sixty dollar cans. I guarantee it. Well, that was what I was. That's what I was gonna say. When I found out that they only cost fourteen bucks to make, I tried to find like a good quality set of headphones yeah. that look that cool, that look as cool as Beats do. They don't look cool. Well, then they look as cool as Beats do. Fine, <laughs> but uh, so stupid looking. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I found I found a couple, but I wanted to run by Sean to see a little bit of audio. I don't have them on me, but that, that was just what I was doing. Thank you, thank you, telling me for telling me that you went shopping, Dick. <laughs> you know when they they call slang for headphones in the music industry and in studios is cans. Yeah. And beats actually look like cans. They look horrible. They look like tin cans you're putting up to your ear. They're so giant. They're okay. So big. If you think beats look cool, downvote this shitty problem. If you think that beats are ugly, upvote it. Great. Is that is that what's going on here? I can't wait for a couple episodes from now when beats try to take photo copyrights and I'm gonna come in. And I was like, I'm right, you idiots. Now and now, Beats owns all the photocopyrights. You're lining Dr. Dre's pockets. Fuck that. I don't mind that. 
Oh, why? Why don't you mind that? Well, I'm why not minding that because I'm not buying them. When I found out they only cost 14 bucks to make, I was like, oh, no, I can't do that. Well, well of course, course they cost 14 it. bucks to make, and, and they have a 15% failure rate. Yeah, what that's an awful bad. product. That's bad. Who? Why would you support a shitball product like that? Well, once Apple takes it over, they'll probably improve the, the manufacturing. Okay, seriously, can you can you remember? Look, one this, these beats almost weigh one pound. That's like having four quarter pounders on your head. Walking around with four hamburgers on your head. Imagine walking around all day with four hamburgers. You look that cool wearing beats, like a moron. You how greasy. much is a, how much does a beer weigh? Like with those beer hats. Like a 16 ounce? That's about a pound, yeah. No, but it's that's fluid ounces. It's no, not well, yeah, ounces. I'm not sure, actually. Probably, probably, I don't know, probably around there. But you're drinking it, so you're not wearing it for more than an hour. It's true, it incentivizes you guys <coughs> to finish it. Right. Whereas Beats incentivize people to steal them, I guess. Is that $400? Yeah, that's pretty funny. I do like that that guy got his Beats stolen. That's because of Beats that exists. That's pretty funny. What, that clip? Yeah. Well, I would rather... Idiots not be singing on the subway. I don't know why so angry, the Beats things. Like, why do you really hate it? I told you, they're shitty headphones. Shitty they headphones. weigh a lot. They increase crime. They increase theft. And it's distracting. And you look stupid wearing them. People are getting suckered into buying them? Yes, you're like? not a DJ. Wear your earbuds and shut the fuck up. And by oh, the way, okay. yeah. people are pretending to be DJs who are wearing them. Oh, please. Yeah, they think they're so cool with their Beats walking around. And, and where do you even store those things? Where the fuck? If you went to meet your friend for coffee, what, are you going to call out your giant fucking one-pound headphones and put them on the table? Oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm done listening now. Where are you even going to store that shit? You and you fucking idiots are obsessed with your iPhones and your Beats and you walk around with chargers and you always got to... You're tethered to the wall like a slave and with your stupid fucking Beats... Like, just more chains, more shackles that you have around yourself, your neck, your head, a pound you're carrying around, like four quarter pounders. I think you, you take the beats off and you wear them like a scarf when you sit down, like you put them around your neck. That's not a scarf, it's a shackle. So that's a problem. So this week, what, uh, what are your two problems? Let's sum it up. I got uh, monkey copyrights. Yeah. And no one talks on the phone. Can you think of something better than no one talks on the phone anymore? A lot of words there. Phonophobia. What is it? Boy, phone, phone call phobia. Come on, that. Manson phone calls. Manson phone calls. Lack of phone calls. Phones are for creeps. Phones are. For, no, you know what? Lack of lack of phone calls. Come yeah. Lack of phone calls. Yeah. The uh, death. How about the uh, the extinction of phone calls? Phone call extinction. Yeah, the death of phone calls. The death of phone calls. The there death of phone calls. There, there we go. There you Thank go. you for your assistance. And you got what? I have female genital mutilation Gosh. and Jesus Christ. And All right. Beats by Dre. Two big problems. So that's it. Go to the website, thebiggestproblemintheuniverse.com, and vote on these. Yep. Thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. in the universe. I'm Maddox with Music Masterson. Hello! So today we have a very special guest with us. I have the Alphabet of Manliness illustrator Leah Tichon with us. Hi. Leah, Hi. thank you for being with us today. Uh, Leah is a very talented illustrator. Oh, and hi. Oh, gosh. Have you have you ever been told that before? No. Well, I have been. true. I've no. been told all the time. No, just for the people listening, I just want them to know that. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I have been told by various grandparents that I'm, that I'm you know, cute, but that's it. Are, that, your, are your grandparents cute? They're dead, oh. so yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you so, look like a hot version of Sarah Silverman. Oh my Is that accurate? God. Do you uh, think that, Maddox, do you think that's accurate? I think Sarah Silverman's a hot version of Sarah Silverman. Yeah, she's, I would agree. Right? She's got a little something. She's got something going on. She's pretty hot. She's funny. Plus, you know she sat on Jimmy Kimmel's face, so that's kind of... Uh, yeah, I mean, she had to at some point. So I, I just want to mention, uh, so Leah has this incredible body of work she's been working on. We've worked together for a long that's time. That's what I was talking Just about. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Put off the work part. Dick, very respectful. Our very first ever guest. You worked out a right lot, out the right? Gates. Uh, I'll, um, do I, work, do I work out a lot? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Let's, let's focus on the important body of work here. Okay, what? Yeah, what? so so she so she's actually working with, uh, how do you pronounce his name? Dino Stamopoulos? 
Oh my god. Uh, Dino Stamatopoulos. Dino Stamatopoulos, and they are working on a graphic novel together called Trent. It's a musical graphic novel, so it's, it's a graphic novel that has an accompanying musical element, and they're probably going to work on a TV show afterwards. But uh, this is something you've been working or, on. Or, yeah, yeah, or just probably extend the series of novels, or he wants to do a stop animation uh, movie about it. So Dino, if you, if you guys cool. don't, yeah, for those who aren't familiar, Dino created the show Moral Oral. And what else? He's worked on uh, a number of things for Cartoon Network. And yeah, Frankenhole. Um, yeah, Frankenhole. That's, that's a good show. Frankie you, watch, you watch that show? I've seen it, but I don't watch it. Oh, it's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, and you went and saw a lot. Yeah, so they're working together right now. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, Leah illustrated the Boners chapter for Alphabet Manliness, oh. as well as the Knockers. <laughs> Best assignment I've ever had. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, Boners, of course. Uh, Can I ask how you guys <laughs> met? That's a long time ago, I and mean, that's like, uh... Yeah, ten years ago, I was a deranged fan that flew to Utah to meet this guy. Whoa! And he, yeah, he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't scared, it actually happened. So. He wasn't scared of a hot girl flying into his hometown? <laughs> I, I had no idea what he loved him. Yeah, I had no idea wow, what, what a weirdo. No, I had no idea what she looked like. She, she sent me an email a long time ago and said, Hey, I'm a big fan, we should do a comic book together, mm. and uh, can I send you some samples? And I thought, okay, sure. And I expected to never hear from her again. Right. And then two weeks later, she sent me this beautifully illustrated article of mine that she interpreted, the Aww. extreme, uh, extreme uh, marketing one. Yeah. And it was awesome. They, we actually included it in the comic that we made together, the best comic in the universe, uh, which is available online. And that was, uh, it just was mind blowing. So we decided to work together. So we've, we've had a working relationship and a friendship for over 10 years now. And, is uh, the friendship mostly you talking and her sitting there listening? Because that's, I mean, it seems like a great friendship. <laughs> okay, Dick. <laughs> Dick. Yeah, right? No, I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah. Can I interrupt you for a second? (laughs) What what then? What then? What then? (laughs) So So you flew in. What did you think of him when you flew in? And did he he line up to what you were expecting after reading on the internet for so long? Uh, He was was, uh, disappointingly nicer. I, I thought I was a little disappointed. That I, I'm a told, dick. yeah, I'm told that a lot <laughs> by a lot of fans. They meet me, they're like, "Hey, Matt, you're so nice to me." I'm like, "Well, you haven't given me a reason to be a dick to you. I mean, I can be, but I'm a dick to dicks. So why would I be an asshole to somebody who's hey? Someone comes up to me like, "Hey, man, I'm a big fan. What am I supposed to punch him in the face? Like, okay, <laughs> then I'm just an asshole. I rail about." I've given you a lot of reasons since to be to be mad at me. So. Well, that's true. It's come out. <laughs> it's come out since. But yeah. how did the stay go? Do you guys remember your first night? Yes. Together? <laughs> yes, actually. This is a funny yeah. story. So, I had a girlfriend at the time, and... Why are you blushing so much? Because uh, I... I come because I'm going to say cute. Oh, 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 my God. God. Oh, okay. Well, kind of cute. Like, you, my mom cute, because you have, like, your hair's up, done, in a bun. Thanks. Ooh. I'll take it. That's me, guys. Look, just... Uh, <laughs> one thing. If, in, just in case you're nervous, don't think about it. Just it, don't think about the number of downloads you get. You said it last last week. What did you say? It was like thirty thousand. Thirty thousand per episode. And this is a, this is a, some important uh, statistics. I, I looked into it just out of curiosity to see what the average podcast got for a download. What would you guess, Leah? How many downloads does the average podcast get in thirty uh, days? Uh, ninety. Nine, that's actually pretty it's close. Yeah, yeah, it's about hundred and forty. So if you get a thousand to three thousand downloads per month. You are in the top 10% of all podcasts. We are getting 30,000 per month. We're almost in the top 1%. The top 1% get 50,000 or more downloads. We're getting 30,000 per episode right out of the gate. This is a little self-congratulatory. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking to the guy who owns the best page in the universe. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, we're talking about you, right? I only brought it up because I wanted to say, like, don't be nervous. You're just having a conversation with two guys, like, in front of all of Dodger State. Okay. (laughs) So don't, you know. All right. Oh, so let, let me finish that story real quick. Um, so I had a girlfriend at the time, and she was super jealous and intimidated of Leah. Uh, wouldn't be. Yeah, because what she, girlfriend she's, wouldn't be. She's attractive and talented. And so when I asked yeah. her to take a picture of us, you know, just to, just like as fans, whatever, uh, she took a picture of us and she cropped our heads out of the photo. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I looked at the preview, I looked at the preview and I'm like, Oh, uh, honey, you accidentally cropped our heads out of the photo. And she goes, oh, okay, I'll, let me do another one. So she took a, fo- she took a correct photo of us. Then, uh, when we were setting up her bedding, because she was going to crack with us, uh, the pillow, the pillow yeah, I asked her to hand me the pillow, and she took it, she tossed it right against my chest as hard as she could. She goes, here you go. Yeah, that was, the, yeah, you could, uh, you could taste the anger in the room. Yeah. But uh, they've since become friends. 
Really? Friends for real? Yeah, no, okay. I, I love her. She's yeah. great. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I just want to mention real quick too, uh, Leah also illustrates for the New York Post and Sky and Telescope Magazine. So, yeah. incredible body work. Thank you for being with us. Um, let's move on to really comments. Great. Uh, no, 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 let's hear who won. Who won last week? Oh, yeah, very important. Okay, so the number one problem, and thankfully so, is female genital mutilation. Okay. That deserves to be a problem. Yeah, it just wasn't that funny. Dick, that's not the point. <laughs> we cover real topics sometimes. Well, I try to. And then Beast by Grace, speaking of real topics, uh, and followed by Monkey Copyrights. That okay. Good problem. And finally, death, the death of phone calls. And by the way, this is the first time ever, I think, that we've had all four problems in the positive territory for votes. Oh, cool. So, yeah, we did, we did a great job. I got to apologize to you about those Beats thing. Um, because I thought, I was saying that they looked cool. And I actually saw this, like, I was at the doctor's office and saw this punk ass kid walk in and, uh, off Beverly Hills, like, in the Beverly Hills area. Uh, he walked into his mom. He was being a little shit. And the beats just looked way cheaper than I thought they were. Yeah. Like this kid was wearing beats, he was a little asshole, and the beats looked like garbage. I don't know if it was him ruining it, like I saw somebody who was a loser wearing them, but I thought they looked cool, I take it back. They looked like shit. Dick, how much does an iPad cost? Uh, like 800 bucks? 800 bucks. Okay, <laughs> you, you can, and most netbooks cost around $400, right? Yeah. So a netbook that has a CPU, RAM, a hard drive, a monitor, a keyboard, that costs as much as one set of headphones. Yeah. That's stupid. You're just paying for the brand. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's $400 for a pair of Beats. Yeah, but Lee, if it looked good, it's worth it, right? Uh, I don't know anything about that. Right, okay. Right. Okay, listen, uh, you, you have some comments. I got comments. This one is from Kurt Radico. Dick, I will pay you $20 to punch Maddox right in the dick. Great. So I vote yes. What you guys? There's no voting. There's twenty bucks. This guy <laughs> says I will put my PayPal info up online, and you better watch yourself, buddy. All right. You got a dick punch coming right this way. Right. You got to you got to return dick punch. <laughs> Kurt's got to pay both of us. This guy. You know, fuck Kurt. I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay you. Well, zero dollars. You're gonna. Put, we're gonna fly out to Kurt's house and punch him in the face. How about that, Kurt? Okay. <laughs> that sounds fair. Uh, Cyril Tiggy says Maddox definitely listens to Wagner. Is that true? Uh, not a huge fan. Not a huge fan of Wagner. No, no. Uh, just uh, not, not my game. I don't. Uh, it's it's neither dark enough, mm. nor is it quiet enough that I can concentrate while I'm working. I, maybe I just haven't read the right piece. I think you would find Wagner specifically presumptuous. Yeah, probably. Yeah. You mean pretentious? Pretentious. Yeah. Well, I have a comment from George Lightchild. Stupid last name. Uh, cool first name. <laughs> oh, he's he's Greek. Uh, I think so. Anyway, he says. He posted a link to an ABC News article that says the clear winner in the tally was the telephone. So he, he posted a link that talked about how people who use phone conversation lie. This is interesting. He said that uh, that people the tally was the telephone, which was involved in 37% of the deception. Face-to-face -face conversations included lies 27% of the time, and instant messages came in at 21%. Hence, if someone calls you, they probably want something and are willing to lie since you won't be able to see their face, and unless you record everything, there is nothing you can do to prevent them from lying afterwards. Yeah, 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 okay. No, phone I, calls lead to lies. I saw, I saw this comment, but this, is, this, is, this was my point for the death of phone calls. You can tell if somebody is either boring or totally crazy in two seconds on the phone with them that you could never tell in text. No, that's bullshit. That was my, that was totally my point, Dick, and, go ahead, your, your point has been superseded by this article with actual research that just proved you wrong. It said that people lie on the phone, and they don't lie through texts. Not as much. No, 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 that's, that's not what, they, yeah, they attempt attempted. to lie. They attempt to lie. I don't care about lying. I just want to know if somebody's absolutely bonkers. Okay. Which I can tell, like, I can tell right away if a girl is insane on the phone, because she sounds like a 13-year-old. Oh, well. Agreed. Stop. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Leah. Listen to the way Leah sounds. Like a normal woman. Like an adult <laughs> woman. Immediately, I can I tell. Much. Like a hot woman, actually. <laughs> oh, shut you, Let's I am, take this outside. I just burped up vomit. Pure vomit. Um, you know what I'm saying, Leah? If you talk, like, if a guy's texting you, you know absolutely nothing about him. Right? Versus, like, a two-second phone call with him. Like, if you're talking to a new guy, do you talk on the phone with him, or are you afraid of the phone, too? 
I'm, well, I, I prefer text just because you get exactly what you want to say out. Thank you, Leah. That's the problem. If a guy calls you, he's a creep, right? You want to talk to some guy on the phone? Well, if I if I reject him first by not texting him back, I don't want to hear yeah. from him on the phone. It sounds yeah. familiar. Yeah, it sounds very familiar. <laughs> this, sounds like, this sounds familiar. Uh, I got a comment from Garrett Miller. He says, Dick, you are chode. <laughs> well, I said I <laughs> somebody, well said. And somebody afterwards commented on this guy. He goes, hey, you got a nice face. He said something like, thanks, I worked on it for 21 years. Uh, this is a guy who looks like a total weirdo. Uh, thank you, Garrett Miller. And one last comment I got, uh, I want to mention. It's from Anthony Mollison. Uh, Mollison, he posted this on the Biggest Problem in the Universe Facebook page. He posted a picture of T.I. the rapper, and he says, why does Dick look like a white version of T.I.? And this is so spot on. I'm going to post this on the website. It's hilarious. Okay. Uh, and here, Leah, if you want to take a look at that. <laughs> does it look cool? Uh, you don't have the, the pencil pedal stash that he does. But other than that, I yeah. can grow one. Do you like that? Oh, um, Jesus. <laughs> no, I, I'm actually not going to say. I have, like, I don't know if I should have a boner right now. Like, this is so gross and weird. No, I don't. Hey, if you don't have one, Leah will draw you one. Thank you. Yes. Ooh. All right. You want to get to what do we got next? You have any more uh, comments? I just want to mention no, uh, no more comments. But I just did want to mention something. Uh, just a little bit of business we need to get out of the way. So uh, a couple things. First of all, I've had a lot of commenters uh, mention that they are deaf and they want to listen to the podcast, but obviously they can't because of hearing impairment. So we have been toying with the idea of getting somebody to transcribe these episodes for us. I had a fan reach out to us. Uh, her name's Lori. She's been very gracious to transcribe one of the episodes. We did it as a test run, episode number seven. We'll probably have that up uh, this week, the transcription for it. However, this takes her about five to six hours to transcribe each episode, and she does a really good job. But I don't believe in having people do free work, and I want to pay them. So at some point, we're probably going to have to talk about uh, generating some revenue from this the podcast, which may include some kind of limited sponsorship or possibly creating a bonus episode for purchase by the fans. So we're going to put that out to you guys and see what you which, which idea you guys prefer. Because we want to, and also we want to cover the hosting costs. This has actually become wildly successful. Dick, do you have any idea how many terabytes of data we're, we're transferring? No, I do, because uh, when we first did this, I had it up on Amazon for like three days, and I think my hosting bill was like 80 bucks by the time I transferred it over to Libsyn. Yeah, and, and that's just for the podcast hosting, not yeah. counting the, the web server that yeah. I'm hosting, which is $70, uh, and then it just keeps increasing every month because we use more resources, more memory, more bandwidth. Uh, so we have to eventually pay these. And, uh, you know, it's been a struggle because I haven't, I, you know, I've always been against ads, but I don't put ads on my website because I still want that to be a censorship-free uh, environment. But if we did consider any kind of limited advertising, it would be from sponsors where uh, we made sure that it was not going to be a conflict of interest with what we want to say on the show. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I would just like to see you have the ability to use money for, like, creative things. Yeah. You know? Like, I thought your book was cool when you get to pay all those people to illustrate it and yeah. find it. It was like a whole thing. And here we are in the room with one of them. So. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I uh, just want to mention that. But leave a comment on the website, the, the biggest problem in the universe.com and uh, we'll, uh, we'll think about it. So anyway. Uh, Speaking of people not getting paid for their contributions to society, this is my first problem. The biggest problem in the universe. Maddox gets no credit. So this uh, was the last week Robin Williams died, right? right? Yeah. So ABC News throws up on their homepage, Robin Williams is dead, uh, his family asks for like peace and quiet and their privacy during this very difficult time. Same exact page on the top in a huge banner, it says, watch aerial helicopter footage live of Robin Williams' house. Like the exact opposite of what they just printed that they asked for, right? Right. So guess who? Uh, the internet Zorro over here, Maddox, takes a screenshot. Yeah. Takes a screenshot of his homepage. Highlights. Watch aerial footage. Highlights. Uh, the only thing we want during this huge loss is for people to leave us to fuck alone. Draws an arrow to it and posts it on the front of his website, right? Within... I don't know, within 24 hours, they issued this huge apology. apology? Is, that, is that accurate? That's accurate. Okay, so here are the, 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 the list of websites that covered this story. Uh, let me see, I got it here somewhere. The Blaze, 
Hollywood Reporter, the Huffington Post, the Rap Deadline, they all have news of this apology and then like clips from a guy on Twitter who posted your image that thank God you had a watermark on maddox.xmission.com or you would have got zero fucking credit for taking one of the biggest news organizations on the planet and making them apologize thank for you. doing something horrific yes thank you thank you yes. Dick. and you got no credit for it no That's credit frustrating and and, the, and variety.com posted that, he, that when they wrote this article they said according to a, a number of different uh, news sources mentioned this discrepancy with abc news Apparently, I'm no longer a person. I'm a number of news sources. Yeah. It's one person, dickhead. It's me. I created it. And I also, there was somebody on Twitter who, who when this whole thing was happening, they started tweeting, and they said, well, how come this Maddox guy posted this thing, and now everybody cares, but I posted it six hours ago, and nobody cared. I said, hey, dickhead, you retweeted the image that I created. The reason nobody yeah. cares is because I created it, dipshit. <laughs> It was me. It wasn't you. Didn't add anything to this conversation. You were just retweeting me. And so while this was going super viral on the internet, uh, on Twitter and Facebook and everything, I decided to start focusing that rage towards the, the president of ABC News. And that's oh really? Was, yeah. Everybody was sending <laughs> sending messages to the president of ABC News. I said, Hey guys, congratulate the president. Uh, uh, most of them, I, I forget his last name. Uh, for doing a bang up job of covering this Robin Williams story. And due to the pressure from all my fans coming down on him, they finally issued an apology. And of course, that was a bullshit apology. apology too. It was a bullshit the apology. The apology was basically we found this uh, link to not have like like uh, news, news value. News value. value. Yeah, yeah. So they, they essentially apologized for not making money from this from this aerial coverage of Robin Williams home. And you know what? what, what what's the best possible scenario? What's the best case scenario that they could possibly hope for with aerial coverage? That like Robin Williams sneaks out the back of the house. <laughs> and like, oh, he's alive, actually. He faked his dead. That'd be incredible, but you know what they you asked, really... You asked. I'm That's not true. insensitive for saying that. You asked. I know, of course. They're trying to find weeping, sad people. Is that what they're trying to find? Possibly, but I'm going to get really I think dark it's safe here. to assume that they were. Well, that's what they were hoping for, but I, I would, I'm would, i going to get really cynical here. I think they were waiting for a body bag to come out of the house. Oh, you're absolutely right. right. That's what they wanted. Yeah. They wanted that shot of the body bag. They wanted that dramatic image. And, of course, Robin Williams' family, they're just inside the home fucking crying because their father passed away, their husband passed away, their friend passed away from depression, and these fucking vultures. Yeah, well, yeah. they hadn't even announced oh, it at that time. Man, his body's still warm, assholes, and they're sitting in the sky like with me metal vultures just sitting there watching the house look with their telescopic lenses oh, looking for that body bag. They just, yeah. they just want that shot of that body bag, these vultures. Yeah, I mean, that is what it is. The part that bothers me is that it would have taken anybody about 10 seconds to see that Twitter guy's screen uh, image with, with your website on it to go to your website and say, oh yeah, this guy obviously is the one who figured it out and broke the... No. Yeah, and uh, comedian Bill Burr retweeted it. Jim Norton from the Open Anthony Show yeah. retweeted it. Uh, what's his name? Joe Rogan retweeted it. It went. It went around every, like everybody. It was even on the Huffington Post. My nemesis. These idiots. Yeah, but if you bring it up at a time while it's a sensitive subject, do you seem self-centered? Like I'm, I'm trying to promote myself by by um, making a stink of nobody's giving me credit. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's why I brought it up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Dick, Dick brought it up for that reason. Of course, yeah, I can't. I can't. It, and honestly, my number one goal was just to get this out there because I've actually met Robin Williams a couple of times. I shared. I had the honor of sharing the stage with him at UCB Theater in Los Angeles. Uh, we didn't actually do a scene together, but he was on the same stage at the same time, which to me was a huge honor. I never thought in a million years I'd be standing on the same stage with Robin Williams. But this guy was just such a gracious dude, a nice guy, and people always say, "Well, why do you care about a celebrity death?" And I generally yeah, don't I say that. Yeah, every most people do, but I, I've actually met this guy, and he is everything that people say about him: a nice guy, a gracious guy, and he he had no ego about him. He would go drinking with the performers afterwards. He would go next door and sit down and listen to you. Doesn't matter what walk of life you came from. He, he asked me what I did for a living. And he asked me how long I'd been doing improv and that sort of thing. And he helps people feel comfortable about themselves, even though he's won an Oscar and he's been in so many TV shows and he has this huge body of work. He had absolutely no ego about him. Absolutely great guy. Yeah, the same story. Did you learn anything from that? From Robin Williams? Yeah, from not having an ego? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Leah, go ahead. No, no, no. 
No, the same story has been said by many people. It's, it's, it's all, it all checks out. I'm sick of hearing it, right? Everybody keeps saying how great you are in the front. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally sick of him, so. No, of course not. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a beautiful person. Well, if you if you work at all in the world of comedy, if you do any anything of the sort, uh, you have all these people who've had these run-ins with Robin Williams. They, they've met him backstage, maybe, or just passing on the street. Uh, I, I've heard story after story after story from my friends who've had personal accounts with Robin Williams. And this isn't just a brushing, like they just saw him someplace and they said hi to him. Like he would stop and have a conversation with you and spend time with you. And uh, after his passing, it even came out that he secretly flew out. Uh, There's a Make-A-Wish Foundation. This little girl was dying from cancer. Her wish was to spend a day with Robin Williams. Well, when he agreed to do it, they found out that she was too sick to travel. So he secretly chartered a jet to her hometown, flew out there, played cards with her all day, watched TV. He even wore a disguise to sneak into the hospital so he wouldn't get mauled and uh, kind of surprise the girl. And it just wow. made her, it just made her day. And she's since passed away, but this this is what he, this is the type of uh, effort that he would put in. And he paid for the stuff I did out of his pocket, so. Uh, yeah, just, just great. Uh, he drops. Well, uh, okay. But the problem, is you not getting enough credit. Yeah, Robert right. Williams has gotten enough credit for all this, but who's going to be talking about the great and powerful Maddox <laughs> when you finally kill yourself? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what would be would actually make me so happy, and, and I would promise not to haunt you guys if you did this for me, uh, bring in my corpse for an episode. Just of this show? Yes. Yeah. Of the show. Be... Like Weekend at Bernie's? Like with a puppet? Exactly. With your mouth? Yeah. Just sitting here rotting in the corner. Okay. Yeah. I'd still probably be sweating as much. It's just anger sweat. <laughs> yeah. Well, for... Go ahead. I don't know. They probably an hour of you if you're Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll give him something to see. <laughs> We'll freeze you and yeah. then sit you in the corner because it's so sweltering in here to, yeah. to recreate the sweating. So you'll like be hot for fire on the oh, yeah. That's yeah. very I'm smart. Yeah, your sounds oh, great. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I mean, it's like, well, it's the whole, like, the reason I brought it in is because it seems like that's what everything on the internet does. Like, your whole BuzzFeed uh, article, didn't you do an article with BuzzFeed? Sure did. It's just a bunch of ripped off stuff. Yeah. Nobody checked. Nobody where checked it's from. anything. Nobody Who made this. Yeah, and I read one of the comments on Reddit. Of course, made it to the front page of Reddit, and some dick fuck just posted it on the Imager. No, idiot. This doesn't. And he posted the source of the image back to Reddit, and it's obviously not the source because the URL is on the actual fucking image. And then Nine Gag, somebody uploaded it to Nine Gag, which I think yeah. was just Nine Gag. They just cropped my URL off of it. I saw that. Oh, oh my god. god. These cheese dicks. Yeah. Look, but ultimately, like, I, as pissed off as I get about that stuff, and that's how originally my I Am Better Than Your Kids article went viral. Somebody posted it, and then they took credit off of it, and they just stole my material, stole my content. But as pissed off as I get about that shit, honestly, sincerely, I am just glad that ABC pulled the fucking helicopters. Oh, no, stop right. with this, bro. Oh, God, <laughs> shut up. We get it. He's great. You're great. Everyone's fucking great. What, Sean? You got some kind of a drop-in? Everyone loves the Sean drop-in. What do you got to say? No, no right. nothing. No, all right. So, anyway, that's my... But it's like, yeah. well, okay, so this is, what, this is my thinking on it. Uh, Howard Stern is famous. I think one of his first big, like, watershed breaks was when he interviewed, in, when he interviewed Joey Buttafuoco. Did you know that? No. I think that's true. Uh, during, like, that's the funny. 90s. I'm, I don't know if it's true. But I think it's true. And everybody who ran it had to credit him on the news. Yeah, not me, apparently. Not because you! Huffington Post, Huffington Post hates me. Those motherfuckers hate me. They're always trying to bury me, and I hate them, too. You know why? Because I call them on their bullshit. They're fucking shenanigans. They're so biased. They're so slanted. I fucking hate Huffington Post. And all they do is steal from other news sources. That's all they fucking do. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. your opinion. Pieces of shit. All right. Uh, let's move on to uh, Leah, uh, our very first guest problem. Okay. Well, I thought about this for a minute, and something that really bothers me when I'm out in public or at a bar, probably mostly at a bar, okay. when you're meeting new people or just... Talking to people, especially in LA, since I moved here about eight or nine months ago. Um, from know, where? From from New York. Oh. Yeah. So we can have a cup of coffee later if you want. But um, yeah. So social cues really annoy the shit out of me. People do not pick up on them. So people who don't pick up on social cues. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So yes, people who do not pick up on them. If you 
for example, you uh, are looking away or looking at other people when they're talking to you. If you're trying to get away from them, you don't, you don't, you're not interested in what they're saying, or they're talking too much and they steamroll over you, and you have no, you have no, no ends, no. They're just talking at you rather than with you, and when you give some kind of social cues, like you look away or you cross your arms or you're trying to talk, and they put, but can it, it, and they don't pick up on that. And they just hold on. I'm making a list. Looking away. Yeah. Or crossing maybe. arms. Crossing mm -hmm. arms. I thought women did that to show off their boobs. So you're saying that they're bored of what you're saying when they do no, that? No. Even when I do that, that doesn't help me. That's what I got. But <laughs> so no, that means don't talk to me. Okay. Or or heavy breathing. Like, all right, when is this over? You know, oh, I, I take heavy breathing as excuse to their hands. Yeah, see? Yeah. We got our signs yeah. all mixed up, dude. Shut up. No, like, uh, you, you know what I mean. The sighing. Like, oh, shut up. You know, that. Yeah, okay. Um, but or, you say L.A. specifically. You think this happens out here more than more happens. than your precious New York? No, it's no, so no. great over there. Everybody's <laughs> no. living in harmony with the fucking signs and signals. No. <laughs> and the jaywalking. No, there's a whole different... Like a bunch different... of precogs out there just communicating telepathically. All right, shut up and let me explain. No, there's a whole... There's a whole... No, New York has its own slew of problems. I'm not even going there. But no, this exists everywhere, obviously. It's all over the place. But in L.A., it seems concentrated because... There's so many people that are self-absorbed down here and they're so into what they're doing with their life and they don't want to hear what you have to say about yourself. So, or are or, or even interested in what you have to say or what, or who you are. They just, oh, so I'm working with this guy and I know this guy, I'm gonna name drop this person. But, and they don't listen or try to pick up on what you're throwing out there. Social mm -hmm. cues? Social so, cues. Well, so let me play devil's advocate. Is it possible that uh, this is uh, a symptom of the type of people you hang out No, no, because I'm meeting a spectrum of people. No, uh, at the mean, bar? Because, <laughs> no, not just at the bar, but all over the place. Anybody. Where's the last, when's the last time this happened to you? At a bar? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so but, what uh, bar? Uh, bar and when do you go there? No, 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 it's not, <laughs> no we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Creepy. Creepy. Uh, but no, but uh, to be fair, uh, you do spend a lot of time in the industry because you've been working with uh, Dino and you go to a lot of uh, industry type type things. So maybe it's, it's the fact people you meet at those parties, they're, they're people who are talking about the job. I don't know, no, this happened in New York also. It happens everywhere. It's not just in this industry or anything like that. I just okay. I just think it's concentrated out here. And so why do you, why do you think that is? Like what, what do you, like uh, why, why, is it, why is that a problem? Yeah, why is that a problem? Because you're trying to communicate to somebody, they, they have, they just have a shield up, they're not taking in anything you're giving them, it's just all about them uh, projecting onto you and throwing out to you, and you're just a soundboard for them, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're just, yeah, they, yeah. Don't, they don't give a turkey. Yeah, why don't you guys get on your text machines and text each other about this instead of calling up like a human. Yeah, a constant interruption. Oh, drop what you're doing. I'm more important right now. <laughs> you have to. Do, you, you can't be working right now because I'm making a phone call to tell you some bullshit that I can send you in a text that you can read at your convenience. Well, uh, so is the is the solution to this not just get better stories? Is that, you got to interrupt them more, I think. Uh, oh okay. yeah, Danny, yeah, you know, this is the king of interruption here. Yeah, that's definitely. No, they're not even. They're just Sending the signal to somebody that you're you're closed off and you don't want to talk to them. So that's that's probably his fault for not being able to, able to pick that up. Why why do you think that is? Why do you think he can pick that up? Uh, because he was just he didn't he didn't he wasn't aware of my presence. He was just wanting to get his stories out about himself and to impress. And that's what people I don't know. A lot of people do do that. It's kind of a crutch, you know. Like I'm I did I accomplished this. Look at me. I'm a, aren't I cool? And it could be even just um, um, not. He was hitting on you though, right? He wanted to yeah, be had yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you why. It's because of the internet. Everyone now has Asperger's. Mm. So that, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I looked this up with what it could possibly be. And people, you know, since 
Asperger's or autism or kind of spectrum uh, disorder that, yes, people have slight touches of it where they have to, there are actually tutorials online for people with, with these disorders to uh, the, the, the give them, teach them social cues, like to ask certain questions like, how are you? Um, what is the weather? You know? Like very basic things that humans yeah. normally do in, in social situations. These are people who lack like their skills, right? Right. right? Are you talking specifically about people with Asperger's or autism, or, or are you saying it's a spectrum? It's, a, it's, it's out there. That's, I, I'm, I'm wondering if that's part of what is it, what's going on, because I feel like if you're a well-adjusted person and you're um, aware of your surroundings and the people around you, you kind of, it's, it's easy to pick up on these things. Like you, you won't, you know, you'll, it'll have a, a back and forth. You'll have a... Yeah, I think there is a lot of pressure on like basic social social interactions. You know? Like even the thought of like asking someone, "How's it going? Like, how's the weather?" Like because of the amount of ridicule that exists just around like being a boring conversationalist nope. or hitting on people in a new way. Like even talking to someone new is seen as like a very daunting task. Now I don't know if it always was that way, but I think that's. Part I think of it. it always was, and I everyone's think it just was. a pussy these days. Because and, and, yeah, it is right. because of the internet. Yeah. But, 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 but. I just think also some people just lack curiosity of other people. They just want to. Yes, absolutely. That is absolutely the case. People sometimes. I sometimes I I've been on dates with people. Where that was a lot more than the other one did. Uh, listen to them talk about themselves for a little while. It's weird. And It'll be okay sit there for a second. Like, I know how to carry a conversation. I know how to make a conversation. So well. But I'm curious. Like, if they yeah, wonder about me. It. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I've been on dates where they haven't asked what I do. Right. They don't know where I live. They don't know where I'm from. They don't know who my friends are. So one day I was on a date, a shitty date, and I sat down and, and after a, you know, a, maybe 30 seconds of silence, I finally asked the girl, hey, how do you know I'm not a serial killer? Plank, plank, and she's like, well, I still uh, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but she said, um, well, I guess I don't know. I never really thought about that. I'm like, well, do you know anything about me? She said, no. I'm like, why not? Because I guess I haven't asked. I'm like, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. my fucking point. You don't know anything about me. Aren't did you, you come curious? Up? Yeah. Did you talk well, about Especially when you're asking tire. a million questions about them. Like, oh, where are you from? Where are you from? Brother. Ugh. Or anything about them. You you're want to know, right? You're constantly asking them, yeah, about them, but they never return it. And it's, it's just... You would think that that's something that's inherent that everyone should. If you're when you're meeting someone new, aren't you curious? Why yeah. not? I, am, am I unreasonable to expect that when you have a, when you meet somebody for the first time, you ask them a question and or or say a comment, you, you make a statement about yourself? What would you expect them to do? To follow up with either a comment about what you just said or a follow up question or something related, right? Is this one yeah. of those autism tests? I, I mean, it's a very basic human 101. Just <laughs> be a fucking human. This isn't science here. Just just a normal person would have those questions or something to say. It's called a conversation. A yeah. And people don't know how to have a conversation. Yeah, they don't know how to talk to people mm -hmm. anymore. Sure, you don't want and to maybe do it, you're right. I think it probably does have to do with the internet. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I gotta think it. It okay. must. It must have a lot to do with the internet. Yeah. Yeah. The internet has to have rewired people's brains. Really oh yeah. Like, I, I, I press it's on right. websites really on a fucking newspaper to try to get the page. Know, <laughs> that's a. <laughs> that's, oh, that's not me deciding to be a stupid Whatever idiot. You know. <laughs> that's me just reaching out and pressing a website when I see it. Like, yeah. I guess I can sponge that. I feel like that inside of me would. You can't. No, you just are. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Too. So I, I really think it has rewired everyone's brain to be a total asshole. It, it's actually scary, especially yeah. Facebook. Uh, this is kind of you see what I was pointing at. What happened to me the other day? Wow. So my, one of my friends sent me a link in a text message that I clicked on, and it was an interesting news article, and not interesting enough for me to comment. There was nothing. He just sent it because it was related to something I had written about a long time ago. And I thought uh, the appropriate know. response to this regret. was to like the message, but I couldn't. The microphone is something bad camera too. <laughs> not on Facebook, but I, just because I thought that, ah. I already I'm fucked. Yeah, because it's I, deeply ingrained. Yeah, Facebook has already the changed the way I forever. think nope. about how I interact with people. It's the dangerous. I mean, right. so I think we just want to get over the. Uh, oh, the religious. I don't know like, what the solution is. Like, okay. People aren't listening to your stories, Leah. Uh, this guy's so not asking about right. you. You gotta have made him nervous. You know, I stood there, the and I, I was taught really at, and that's like, all it was. Taught you know, at, yeah, that's being a problem. Oh, Maybe that's pay a good way of phrasing the problem, yeah, the people talking at you. Yeah, that and, and 
you know, but when they talk at you and you do have a second, you want to follow up with a question and so then you ask another question and then it's all, a whole other 20 minutes of railing on about themselves where... You know what we need? Referees at bars. Yeah, start giving people red cards or yellow cards, <laughs> blowing the whistle like you're talking about yourself for too much. Uh -huh. You gotta let, you gotta ask this girl a question. Amen. Yeah, ask this girl a question, idiot. Hey, ask give her shit. another hair, yeah, or shoes, yeah. or whatever. Oh, <laughs> um, I like you don't have hair or shoes. What are you gonna do? Yeah, I date a lot of girls with no hair and no shoes. Hair or shoes. Yeah, those but, are called guys. <laughs> but yeah, it has Never nothing show. to do with Never wanting to talk about them. yourself. I just want. If it has to do with wanting to have a conversation. They all like to do drunk shapes. Are you shapes. about another fucking yeah, human what? being in your drunk room shapes? Yeah, aren't you curious? Oh. Aren't you afraid? Usually, why would you why I ask that questions like a horrible is to idea. suss out whether or not uh, and they the film person it, I'm talking to has lights like on funny in their home. Right. Right. And, not, and not in their home, in their head. Like, is someone had lights on so in someone's home? Right. What's yeah. going on, right? Yeah, just funny. aware. Are you aware? Yeah. In the, yeah. In the moment. moment. How aware are you of your surroundings? How aware are you of me as a person? Because that's right, Leah. Uh, if they can't pick up on social cues, that might mean... So this is Maddox's friend that illustrated his book. Yeah. He's and after worst. this episode... Yeah, I'm sure oh, the other day. <laughs> yeah, last episode. Sigmund Futon over here. <laughs> this is what I got mad about. <laughs> Did you make that up? Yeah. Right on the spot, dude. Sigmund Futon, yeah. that's hilarious. Yeah. That's really good. That's Sigmund Roid. Yeah. Sigmund Roid, what does that mean? Oh, Sigmund Hemingway? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. 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 I don't know that I would ever want to have sex with that guy. Dick? Anyway, yeah, I'll see. But yeah, you want to know that the lights are on. What kind of social cues are you guys telling their boats for most slight? What's the social cue to get that this time? Interest of hand on chin. Hand on chin. Yeah, thank you, Leah. That's exactly the right response. You want a guy. Because if a guy's telling you about his hemorrhoids, guess what he is? Fucking confident. Huh? I mean, like, right? Totally crazy. Well, okay. There's a fine line. You have to see their eyes. If they're making good eye contact with you, but if their eyes are going in, they're, like, oh, they're, they're like looking at you from the top of a pit that you're in, <laughs> then they're probably crazy. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, yeah, that's uh, well, that's a good that's a good problem. Uh, I don't know if it's the biggest problem in the universe, but it's definitely worthy of being on the list. So. Yeah, when you're trying to meet new people, it's it's it's, it's a problem. Yeah. Have you found meeting new people in LA, in New York? Very easy. Really? It's, yeah, it's pretty easy. Um, new York, there's. Uh, I don't. I'm not gonna get into the whole New York, LA, you know, battle royale, but it's. Uh, but the. It, I feel like everything's harder in New York. It's, it, more difficult. People are closed off. That, you know? I, really, I never really have a problem meeting people in New York. Uh, I, I've, heard the, I've heard this. I've heard this one. There are a disproportionate York, amount of single women. Yeah. New York's a New York's a chick town. Chicks love New York. It's three to one, three women to one man. What Go. guys? I don't know. Yeah, it's that high. Flocks, flocks in New York. Yeah, but it's pretty high. Like it's one of the only places I've been awesome. to in the world where servers actually hit on me, which is usually the opposite. Guys hit on servers, but in New York, I've had multiple servers give me their phone numbers while I'm just sitting there trying to enjoy my coffee. This guy. Yeah. What a stud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> flying in to right. Utah. You're conning women, beautiful women into flying into Utah to talk to you. Conning. Waitresses are Please. giving you their phone numbers. Yeah, Candies. just trying to have a beverage with titties in my face. Yeah, what's yeah. your social cues? How are you luring these broads in? All the hemorrhoid it's talks. Out. The hemorrhoid talk. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Yeah, because they, they, they look at me and I talk to them about my hemorrhoids. like, that guy's talking. <laughs> I want, I want, I want some of what he's cooking. <laughs> he's just like a big puppy asshole. Really, <laughs> like a bad Is that what happens? Did you think anything would go on when you went and saw him for the first time? No, I knew he had a girlfriend. Um, yeah. Does that really yeah. mean anything? Right. Now it's just a brotherly type of. Oh, come here, give me some noogies. Yeah. Oh, I'll give you some. Noogies. Yeah, that's your move. Oh no! Somebody ruined it.
Come on, butthole. Okay, don't overpolish. 